Welcome to part one of a five-part series, every comic book movie ever ranked. This is Sal for Drunk Nerd Sober Nerd, and I sat and watched nearly 160 comic book films in three months and attempted to make sense of it all while giving a countdown of my absolute worst to very best and tried not to lose my damn mind. First, let's lay down the ground rules. Only films from what I'm calling the modern era, that's anything after Superman 1978, there's tons of stuff before then, but no. And we're doing everything all the way up to Avengers Endgame. No television shows, but TV movies are okay. No animated films unless they were released in the theater, otherwise this list would be three times as long. No films based on comic strips. Dick Tracy and The Phantom? Go fuck yourselves. Comic books and graphic novels only. Also, there's a bunch of movies that didn't make the list for various reasons, but 160 is enough. I listed those films in the description below. And let this be your warning, spoilers for everything ever. So let's get started with the absolute worst comic book movies of all time and work our way up, starting at the bottom with number 160. Yep, this exists. This film basically took Captain America and made him a guy that took a bunch of steroids. Your father developed and perfected the ultimate steroid. And they gave him a motorcycle. It has a convoluted soap opera plot and it's so terrible. I fell asleep three times before I actually got through it and they even managed to make his shield the most boring thing ever. One fifty nine. This series always did a good job of portraying Banner's torture, but that's about all it did well. Yes. This film in particular is borderline unwatchable. It doesn't qualify as so bad it's good until the last two minutes, because the actual death of the Hulk is quite possibly one of the most ridiculous, anticlimactic, and entertaining things on this list. One fifty-eight. Yes, two of these things exist. This was the second Cap film they churned out that year, and this one gets extra points for having the legendary Sir Christopher Lee as the nefarious Miguel. Miguel. Once again, Cap's shield is so slow and boring, it just takes a simple sidestep and you've escaped its wrath. Hold it. Uh, ma'am? I want you to remember something when you get out of jail, pal. The old people around here are my friends. Except you. Fuck you, Miguel. 157. How was it your virgin? Guess I'm just old fashioned. Edward Furlong looks completely non threatening as the crow. Kind of like a high school goth kid. I want to die. I want to die. Do it! David Boreanaz shows us what happens when a bad actor tries to do the Joker. You see, the world's like an angry dog and a choke chain, you know? It lunges, snaps. Don't fret, Furlong. The apocalypse is going to be one hell of a honeymoon. Tara Reed is. Tara Reed, I guess. I bet you that virgin rye tastes just like cherry pie. And they somehow got Dennis Hopper in there for a day of shooting. Nobody move! I'm doing this dead or alive! Keep going, Daddy! Fuck this movie. 156. Why do they call it by water? Because it's by the water. It's hard to believe that this was just a couple of years before Marvel got the MCU going. This movie mostly sucked. It started with boobs, but then took a turn towards predictable and cliche. I'm Kyle Williams, the new sheriff. This is Kyle Williams, our new sheriff. I'm the new sheriff, ma'am. Sheriff Kyle Williams. We all for the new sheriff. First cuff is free. The most interested I got was when I realized the female lead was Trish Walker from Jessica Jones. Man thing looked kind of cool, but you really only saw him for 20 seconds. 155. Somehow this shit got made. Beauty is truth, and truth is beauty. That's all ye on this earth know, and all ye need to know. Everyone is beyond terrible in it. I'd always be in possession of the most dangerous weapon ever created. I'd say it's a must watch, but it simply isn't. It's one of those movies where it's good enough just to know it exists. The only good thing about it is the laugh you get when you tell people you own it on DVD. Damn. What's weirder is this is the first of many films on this list to be written by David Goyer. Goyer! He's responsible for some of the worst and some of the best. This is obviously not one of the best. <laughs> Quiet a woman, Nicholas. 154. Yep, there was a 1978 Doctor Strange movie, and it was way ahead of its time. It included classic Doctor Strange characters like Morgan Le Fay. She looks familiar. Wong and the Ancient One, who for some reason just keeps getting whitewashed. And it had a decent plot. Is that? Yeah, that's definitely Lucille. And that is the fakest looking baby in anything ever. 
153. This one has Thor in it. It's exactly like Thor Ragnarok, except violently boring. One fifty two. I will say I expected watered down violence here. Not the case, but it was still god awful. Dolph Lundgren supposedly took this role really seriously, but he's only any good when he's cast in roles with little or no dialogue. Stay in the bus, okay? Stay here. Actually, no, I, I take that back. He's bad and awkward in this, even when he's not talking. The painted on five o'clock shadow is a nice touch, though. I think they dyed his armpits black. Yep. 151. Well, I'll be dipped in shit and rolling breadcrumbs. Big basketball guy, not Scully, and the Breakfast Schlub star in this horrid DC adaptation. If someone could tell Shaq to stop raising his eyebrows as he delivers every syllable, that would be great. Thanks. Yeah. It even makes Richard Roundtree come off lame. I especially like the chef. And there's this entire plot thread throughout the whole movie about a woman making a souffle. And anyone talking in the room will deflate said souffle. This isn't just one scene, it's a recurring part of the story. I just thought that was worth mentioning. The cheesy 90s dialogue is second to none. Man, I got all kind of crazy honey sweating me. You can call me the man. But at least it's lighthearted and silly enough to maybe watch. Hey, why you play? Just once though. Number 150. This was basically a piss poor attempt at using the Hulk to launch a Daredevil TV show that would star John Reese Davies as the Kingpin. <gasps> Shh. It didn't work. 149. When do I get some fresh troops in my battalion? Ugh. I mean, the plot isn't that bad, but those fake ears attached to his headpiece. Once you know it's there, you, you can't not see that. Fun fact, Cap is played by the son of J.D. Salinger. This Cap, though, isn't strong or impressive in any way whatsoever. His main special move is acting sick. Sharon, could you pull over for a minute? I think I'm gonna be sick. Would you pull the car over, please? So he can steal people's cars. And the editing of this action scene might give you a stroke. I remember really liking this movie as a kid. Kids are stupid idiots. 148. You really know your stuff, babe. Don't call me babe. This is the most 90s thing ever. I'm seriously not even sure there was a script though. Sure, they built some sets and set up some action sequences and Pam Anderson's boobs showed up, but I swear I honestly couldn't even remember what it was about immediately after watching it. All I got was that she's a bounty hunter that owns a bar that she dances in sometimes or something. She has divine makeup and don't call her babe. I got you, babe! Don't call me babe. <laughs> 147. It doesn't suck in an incompetent filmmaking kind of way, but it sucks in a Hollywood hack cash-in kind of way. <laughs> it's sufficiently made, but the editing is especially awful. It's just abysmally lame, and that hat helmet thing is so dumb. There are way worse movies on this list, but they do more with less. When a film has a big budget and studio behind it and sucks this bad, it loses a lot of points for me. It's only an hour and a half movie, but it feels like three hours. It's overtime. 146. The cartoon had no shortage of villains and stories kids wanted to see brought into the movies. This third film was the perfect time to finally explore the possibilities, but instead we got a bunch of lame generic crap. Just stick them in ancient Japan with two regular boring human villains and then make their teeth huge. Oh, and also make the heads less realistic than the previous films like goofy sock puppet things. Even dopey kids in 1993 felt insulted by this movie. I should know. I was one. 145. I know, I know, it's sort of a classic since Wes Craven directed it, but it still puts me to sleep. Tight enough story though, and it does have a charm to it. But in the end, at least to me, it's still a boring 80s monster movie with rubber suits. 144.
143. On paper, the original Swamp Thing is a better film, but this 1989 sequel is classic B-movie campiness. It's terrible, but I'd rather watch it because it entertains me more. And the costume is way better in this one. 142. In 1986, a guy named Bernd Eichinger bought the rights to a Fantastic Four film, but if he didn't produce a film within a certain amount of time, he would lose them. So he hired famous B-movie director Roger Corman to make one for super cheap in 1994 and never actually release it. The thing is, it's really not that bad. Well, I take that back, it's awful, but only as a result of the crazy low budget. The plot itself is just as good, if not better, than later reboots, which, thanks to this film, Burned got to make as well. 141. The Crow Salvation. It's not very good. The plot starts out in an interesting enough way for a Crow sequel. I mean, they at least tried something different, but it steadily gets worse as it goes and feels like a made-for-TV movie. Someone should tell the effects department that blood doesn't look like high C and vodka sauce. Thanks. 140. <sighs> the original Mask was a cool movie with cartoony style. The sequel, however, is basically just a live-action cartoon. Like, that's it. That's all it is. It had very little in common with the original Mask, so if you like that, don't expect much here. It did have something in common with the Marvel movies. Loki and Odin are in it. 139. I've always been a huge sucker for time travel stories. They're almost always fascinating to me. Almost. 138. A group of kids start a movement to get everyone to get rid of their weapons? Topical! Despite the rich history of Superman villains, the filmmakers decide to make Superman fight... Nuclear Man? Weird! Gene Hackman can't say nuclear? Nuclear, 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 nuclear. Excellent! Superman can fix the Great Wall with his eyes? Fantastic. The effects company ran out of money, so they reused the same shot over and over and over again? Oh... Uh, Stop! That's enough! 137. The Shadow with Alec Baldwin and Magneto. You show me someone who loves this movie, and I'll show you someone I want to punch in the face. I know this is saying a lot, but this is one of the weirdest Tim Curry performances ever. Sissy. Come out of here and fight like a man! I bought a ticket to The Shadow when I was 14 so I could sneak in to see Speed, which was R-rated instead. Afterward, I snuck back in to see The Shadow, and it sucked then too. Next time, you get to be on top. 136. As far as direct-to-video sequels go, this isn't bad, but that's not saying much. There's a few interesting scenes, but the rest is just generic, shaky cam, CG horror bullshit. 135. George Lucas once claimed that in 20 years, Howard the Duck would be seen as a masterpiece. Some theory. It's been over 30. It was terrible! You gotta love some Leah Thompson, though. All I remember about this movie from when I was a kid was how scared I was of Mr. Rooney. And with good reason. 134. Bat skates, bat credit cards, bat nipples. Joel Schumacher undid any good that had been done for Batman by making an updated version of the cheesy Adam West style Batman. Uh -oh. He even recently apologized for it. I really want to apologize. All of the performances in the film are flaming garbage. Never leave the cave without him. The script is nonsensical and Schumacher is Satan incarnate. I could talk about this shit fest all day, but once I start, I won't stop. Let me just say that the creator of Batman, Bob Kane, died shortly after the release of this movie. Curses! I don't think that's a coincidence. 133. Supergirl does battle with a tractor, and then Supergirl does battle with an evil witch over the affections of a hunky construction worker. That's... well... yeah, I mean, that's, that's it. Yeah, it's the construction worker, and... yep. Yeah. 132. Some people consider this film a cult classic. Some people also drink urine to stay young. 
Seriously, if anyone can explain to me why this is a good film, I'm listening. It's scattered, incoherent, and uninteresting. The filmmakers cared so little that they actually forgot to film important scenes, so then the comic artists were brought in to animate them. Naomi Watts is supposedly ashamed of it, Ice-T is a kangaroo, and it kept putting me to sleep. Tell me the security code. There's nothing worse than waking up repeatedly to the realization that you have to watch more Tank Girl. 131. A likable and skilled lead martial arts actor. Engaging villains. Spectacular effects. Conflict and drama at its finest. I'm a pickpocket, not a hero. I'm out of here. God, this movie sucks. 130. It seems to me like Frank Miller attempted to recreate what he and Robert Rodriguez did with Sin City. It just came across as emotionless and empty. The actors did well with what they were given. I mean, it was a solid cast, but the movie was doo-doo. Don't you think that's plain damn weird? 129. Jennifer Garner is an excellent actress, but she's kind of too likable for this. Electra's supposed to be someone you love to hate, more of an anti-hero than a hero. The first 15 minutes of the film, though, are fantastic since it's a scene lifted directly from the comic. In fact, the first third of the film is kind of badass and then it devolves into a sloppy, aimless mess with bad visual effects. And that's it for part one. I hope you enjoyed this tour of the worst comic book movies ever. Join us for part two as we graduate from the painfully awful to the wildly mediocre. Please be sure to like and subscribe and see you next time. Bye.